between my eyes What do the find? Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, the legendary infomercial king, Ron Popeil, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months, solve their biggest business challenges, and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's the application only. Today, I'm very excited. There's some people when they do interviews, they want to interview Oprah or Elon Musk. For me, on my list, no joke, Ed, was Ed O'Keefe. And you will see why in a minute. Today, we have Ed O'Keefe. He's father of seven, grew up in a household of 13 children. He's author of the book, Time Collapsing, The New Art of Speed, Money, Power, and Meaning. He's used his time collapsing methods to leap to the top of industries, and he's started multiple companies from scratch to multiple seven and eight, even eight figure businesses. In dentistry, he sold over $50 million in marketing systems and seminars. He started Marine Essentials and has sold over $60 million in health supplements. And this is all with seven kids. One of the most impressive things about Ed's resume is a Kokoro 40 graduate. 51-hour yeah. mini hell week created by Commander Mark Devine. Crazy stuff, which we'll talk about. And he has a podcast, the edokeefshow.com. Check it out. He's also an investor in nofoods.com, which is a health food company that is disrupting the food industry. Ed, thank you for joining me. There's a couple things that I find interesting about Dennis Profit. One was the way you came up with it. Two was, was this the time where you were getting... Um, really into learning and writing copy? At yes. what point did that happen? Because I think that's a skill set. I consider you, even though you don't consider yourself a copywriter, I consider you one of the top people who writes copy. Thanks, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty nice. um, so who are you studying at the time? And the sales copy for my mental toughness business, right? And then, so I had to get up. I mean, it was all about sales copy back then I and mean, it still is in some ways now. it is 100 percent. you know it whether is. it's video or audio or whatever. whether you want to sell your book i mean all of it's copy yeah yeah um and so yeah and quite frankly that opened up a lot of doors because at the age of 27 i look like a pro on paper <laughs> <laughs> who were you and learning so, from at the time uh jeff paul dan kennedy Gary Halbert, John Carlton, mm-hmm. and just handwriting, handwriting sales letters in the morning, then typing them out, you know, and um, yeah, I mean, that was my system. And then, you know, what I didn't really understand back then, Jeremy, was I didn't understand, like, I didn't understand cash flow management, like I wish I did, um, the dental niche our cost per lead was so much higher than what like the chiropractor was experiencing or Mm. what the realtor was experiencing really yeah and i i think that's because in like a chiropractic office still to today you can send a direct mail piece to a chiropractor's office and chances are he's going or she's going to open it or it's going to get to them and in a dental office, there's more gatekeepers, I think. Uh, right? 100%. Yeah. So well, I think one, just... I'm a chiropractor. Two, my dad's a dentist. So I can tell you there's a lot more gatekeepers in the dental office for sure. Yeah, yeah, zero question. So I think that's one of the um, key things as well. The other thing I found interesting, Ed, was when I was doing the research – one, two things that did the best in the dentist profits, which I wanted you to talk a little about, is two niche co- coaching clubs. Yeah, yeah, niche coaching clubs. So, so this is, I think, where you know, like um, uh, the the secret to like, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I was on the phone with a client right before I got on this call, yeah. and he's got a product that's working, and he's telling me about a new product he's going to create to a different market. I was like, dude, stop, stop, stop. 
you have something that's working, you need to drive it out and find out what else they want. And what I think most people underestimate is the, the, the level of effort that's required to push the boulder uphill right. to get it to start moving downhill. Right. And so I had probably gone two years into the dental business where I was making money, but I was still like, it was month to month. And um, it's when I started figuring out, like I started listening to my clients and they would say something like, you know, kind of like, wouldn't it be great? Very much like the freedom question. If you were able to just train our staff for us. And I was like, all right, cool. And then a consultant came around that I really liked. We got along great. So we started a business together. That business was a total smash. And then um, one of I started noticing all my most successful clients came from a particular niche, hmm. like a, a dentist, like a specialty. Like implants or yeah, something I mean, like they, that. They were general dentists who also did implants. Yeah. And um, so I created an entire coaching program just for that niche. Mm. And that was a smash hit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell, like, obviously the time collapsing is your passion right now. When I go to the dentist profits, it's like, I don't, I don't care about talking about this. Yeah, but, I don't. Well, but, it's, it's, but I think there's a couple key things in there that I think are important that you use that's right. now. That's right. Like, if you look at the mm-hmm. chapter in my book called The Ghost of Your Past Self, yeah. the guy back then was a ghost. Like, I, that, I, that guy does not exist anymore. He was right. a trail that I've left behind, you know? And so the I. The concepts live on, though. Like, from your, your motivational speaking days, the NLP stuff lives on. The copywriting lives on. Yes. Doing yeah. the niche, like your mastermind is specifically niche to people who have health businesses. No, it isn't. <laughs> well, one of them is. Well, it, it started off that way. Yeah. But then when I started meeting guys that wanted to be in the mastermind, they weren't health guys. Maybe you didn't know this. But then we opened it up. So here's the other thing. Yeah. We started realizing that there was a lot of guys who didn't even know that they should have a, a health division of their business who were selling, like, say, survival stuff or e-commerce widgets. like, right. And they should be in the health business, but they didn't even know they could. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, they're in the health business, and they're instantly profitable because they added a health department. We have a guy who's like a med spot clinic who now has a health division. And he's like, well, we were just giving like vitamin D shots or whatever they were doing in the, you know, uh, you know, blood transfusions. I'm kind of joking, but, uh, but like, so now that the, the, the opportunity for everybody expands. So I get bored and so, so like there's people that look in the past and they live in the past and that's okay. I really am future focused and there's pros and cons to that. The con is, is that sometimes you don't drive out what is a big opportunity sitting right in front of you because you're like, yeah, but that's who I was, you know, in the past, you know, I mean, I literally could go back in the dental profession and do exactly what I was doing, update it to this day, create a story around, well, I'm back and I have all this new stuff and we could, uh, we could very quickly ignite excitement, you know. Yeah, because I mean, at that time, at the height, it was six or seven million dollars, and most people would yeah. just Dive be a hundred percent happy with yep. that. Um, and then you shifted to Marine Essentials. I shifted, but there was also market forces happening that were affecting those businesses. Just so everyone knows, I didn't just close down and jump ship. After, it was right around two thousand nine, so two thousand eight, everything crashed and. Dentists were no longer spending money on group coaching clubs like they they probably are today. They're probably back doing it. And I knew that I either, A, had to go deeper into their offices and create more of a consulting program, which I did not want to do at all, Hmm. or create a turnkey online marketing division that we did a lot for them. So... One of the things I did is I said to one of my, my employees at the time, uh, Greg Presti, I said, look, dude, here's the thing. This is what's going to happen to our business in the next you know, three to six months. So what I can do is give you a severance right now. You go start this business. I'll be your number one referral. And 
I think like he was making more money within two months being out of my business, mm. starting his own turnkey like search engine ranking, you know, local search business. And um, he's still kicking ass today. That's six years ago. 100% him though. Like that's all him. Uh, I do not want to take any credit for that. It was just the dynamics were shifting. And then the, 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 the staff business, I sold that division. So there were things that were happening and I thought, you know, it's probably a good opportunity to start to transition. Yeah. So I want to talk about Marine Essential starting, but I know you like to talk about future and current. So I want to start in, you mentioned some rebranding stuff that's going on. Uh, so I, I don't know if you yeah, I've had Marine Essentials for like, what, almost seven years. And at our height, we did around $30 million, a little under $30 million in one year. And then um, made a ton of mistakes on hiring and then infrastructure development from a tech perspective. So um, that was a few years ago. There's a few things that happened this year that put closure on some of those relationships in a really nice way. Uh, and... Um, you know, I kind of had a discussion with myself, which is like, look, <clears throat> I have a lot of phenomenal assets sitting right here. We're still doing, you know, a few million a year. And um, the path and plan with social media nowadays to reinvigorate the business and, and double it and triple it, in my opinion, has never been like potentially easier. I don't want to say it's easy, but I think it's potentially a lot easier than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, so I brought on a couple new team members and we're just, we're just going back at it, you know? And so that, that's kind of on the supplement side, that's, that's where it's at. And it's amazing how like, you know, once you ride a bicycle, you know how to ride a bike. And so. Talk know. about time collapsing. I mean, when you were starting Marine Essentials, you yeah. time collapsed. So talk about like in the very beginning when you started well, it. When I started, I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, right. I I was listening to the wrong people and I lost like $150,000 out of the gate. From and doing what? Blew up my merchant account. Well, because, you know, we created a whole product uh, offering around giving a free trial. And at the time, uh, a lot of the courses that were out there teaching guys were like, oh, you can make $30,000, $50,000 a day. Um, and they were doing free trials. What most people don't realize, there's so many things, there's so many traps, there's so many traps when it comes to the free trial market. And what I mean by that is I'll just kind of give everybody like the, Go the ahead. Yeah. insect thing yeah. is that, you know, there's, there's people buy stolen credit cards online and then will go in. If they're getting paid a $30 commission, they'll go in and sign up for these free trials using mm. a stolen credit card. And by the time anyone knows what is going on, You've already paid out the commission, and uh, the bank doesn't realize it's a fake one. You've paid thirty bucks. You're supposed to be getting your second rebill, which would be say fifty or say sixty nine dollars in fifteen days. That never goes through. And so I was just working with the wrong. There's there's definitely ways to uh, mitigate that, but I was working with the wrong people, who really didn't take care of the, the merchant relationship. No, they, so fraud, tra it's called fraud traffic. And what happens is they'll, it's just so crazy. Your listeners are going to be like, this is just crazy, but they'll send in like, say they'll, they'll go like, say like now the, the day now would be like, okay, they go get like two sales on Facebook. They put one fraud, fraud sale in. So you don't really catch it because it's only one out of three or one out of five. And then all of a sudden, when you lower your risk tolerance or whatever, one day they'll throw 30 or 40 or 50 through, and you get 100 sales. You're like, man, I'm going to be rich. Well, in 15 days, only 35 or 40% of your sales go through, but you paid out commission on 60% more than that. So this happened to me, and then, I mean, I allowed that to happen because I didn't know better. So now I know better. So we, we stayed in the business. I stayed in the business. I shut down that business and I stayed into it and I just, I grinded it out. I hired consultants that I trusted, uh, that I learned from. And man, I mean, I, you know, the book has a ton of our stories. I have some videos up on the, on our website, 
you know, on just sharing more in depth about the health supplement business. But there's a lot of there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things that can go wrong. And so one of the things that I do with our consulting and our coaching clubs yeah. is is um, and I'm not pitching everybody on this, but it's like one of the things we do is we time collapse their capability of going from zero or even having some success to you know, they, it's their it's their success. But my job is to mitigate all their risk by yeah. coaching them on my lessons yeah. and then introducing them to people who are, are quote unquote good in the business, you know. So that that's what we do, you know. And you know, I have some guys in the supplement business, some guys in the health information business. We have some clients that are uh, consultants, you know. I mean, I say the time claps because even before you I have a friend, I mean, Ed Clay runs a hospital down in Mexico. He's in our group, you know. Yeah. So Kind of interesting, you know. He's amazing. I say that because before you you had that campaign with the the initial offer that you lost money, you would create the product and the team and consult before then, didn't you? No, I. So uh, that was after for the actual product creation. The 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 Marine D three that took off and still does very well today. That was after. That was after. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So the but I had there was somebody who was helping me, but I didn't really realize that he was getting a piece of the action from the traffic guys mm. and the side, and um and so I was like, didn't I was like the 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 guy at the poker table that didn't realize there was a different game going on. <laughs> That's so horrible. Everybody, yeah. So when it, when stuff blew up, I was the only one that was left with the bad hand. I see. Know, saw my money. So the next iteration was the marine essentials and talk about the first campaign because i find it first interesting. Camp- yeah. yeah the first campaign came campaign was in direct mail you know yeah. I don't, that's what you're referring to yes yeah. it is yeah direct mail, sixty thousand pieces two different um tests and um it, it pulled pretty well out of the gate and then you what know, did you send in the mail a magalog like a uh 16 page full color wow looks like a catalog you went all out on the first mail yeah, I mean, you know, we hired. I spent like thirty thousand bucks on the copywriter, and then, you know, I mean, we we were doing we were doing it as a, I, you know, I really wanted to grow this company to like a hundred million dollar company. What I didn't know in hindsight was that I I should have had a million. I should have either raised a million bucks or just uh, known that I needed or get a line of credit for a million bucks. So, you know, when you go into that business. <sighs> The speed of turnover of cash flow and acquiring more customers and having oh, and having more custom having a lot more products to market to your existing customers yeah. becomes a uh, much more important element. So, so you didn't write the copy for it. No, uh, I've done most of what's online, and um, but no, I hired a pro. Pro level, uh, dur- so so. Here's the thing. Here's a here's a really good tip. If you're gonna go into a media, that you know, it's the whole. If you have a gun to your head, you're going. You got to make this work, or else your kids are gonna die. And you got you know, and you're going into a new media, which is called direct mail. And you're like a pro, but that's like the pro wrestler going into an MMA ring, and he doesn't understand that you can get kicked in the head and when you take people down they know how to defend a wrestler right so you you got to know what arena you're in which actually there's a whole chapter about know the landscape the rules and the lies mm-hmm. and so we went and hired you know i got a doctor involved we had a lot you know we we had a pro level team yeah 100 percent. and um anything another lesson learned from marine essentials that'd be important for people I know like there's a couple things that stick out, you, interesting stuff with email drops and then what you discover with the offers, uh, but I'm curious for you what, what sticks out to you. Well, I mean, I'll just give one super high level, which is a great tip, is just you know offer crazy offers to your existing customers yeah. right out the gate about where they could buy a lot more like a 10-pack bundle, six-pack bundle and save, save you know 40% because here's the deal they're in a buying mode and they may never come back to your store ever again. So give them more offers of big stuff and don't, and don't, don't inhibit. 
like we talk about this value ladder thing of like, you know, of going from step one to step two, step three, step four. Th there's truth to that. Like there's the awareness, there's – but, but then there's other people like, like hyper-responding buyers like, like me. If I see someone I like, don't – I just freaking let me you buy. You just want to go it, yeah, and get it. And, and there's a lot – there's about 20 percent of your – or maybe even 12 percent. Maybe 1 percent of your buyers might be that way. But cater to them. Give them give them more opportunity. And if because they may make way more money than seventy percent of your other guys, and that will give you the revenue to acquire a lot more customers and profit and profitable, yeah. profitably. Ed, this has been fantastic. I have um, one last question. I know yeah. you have seven yeah. kids to get to. You have three businesses. You have to get to do a Kokoro full Kokoro workout today. Um, no, I already got my, I got my work. <laughs> I'm saying I'm good. I'm good. But before I ask it, um, we can point people towards uh, the Ed O'Keefe Show dot com, um, timecollapsing dot com. Where else should people check out online? Uh, um, that's cool. That's good. Ed O'Keefe Show. Um, if people like going to seminars, you know, we do our Nashville event. We're planning on doing that again in 2017 cool. and 2018. Like, make that a highly thing. recommend it. Um, yeah. We have a health health supplement intensive that we're probably going to have come out here shortly. Mm -hmm which I'll walk people through for two days, everything they need to know. Um, go check out nofoods.com. Go get some... K-N-O-W. Yeah, K-N-O-W foods.com. Get the waffles. Or go to Amazon Fresh. G I mean, get them. Get the waffles. You you're going to be like... And they have donuts coming out. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's crazy. So it's last question. Crazy. Yeah, last question. Maybe it's two... Maybe it's two um, one, I, I want to get your fun facts, but the question I was going to ask was... Um, if there's some kind of crazy birth story with seven kids, some crazy family story. Oh, geez. But the fun fact, you you said you had two fun facts that were sticking out in your head. I mean, crazy birth. My mom would know the birth story. She knows all. I mean, she really knows. She's like, oh, like, I don't know if I was hard coming out or if I was easy coming out. Not you. I mean, your kids, like you and oh, your. Geez. Okay. So you want to know my kids? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had some crazy stuff going on. So like our first two children, like Michael and Grace, like. Like they could, they, we, both of them were impossible to come into this world. So actually one fun fact is that like my wife might kill me for sharing this, but like, I don't want her killing you. <laughs> the last five kids came out cesarean section. Hmm. It's four C sections. Just mad Why would and, she made mad at you for that? What's that? Why well, would she? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I might be like, why are you sharing that? But whatever. I mean, <laughs> Is what it is. Um, I would say that my – I'll tell you one more quick thing about Grace. Like, So when Grace was born, she had the cord wrapped around her neck twice. Oh she came God. out white as a ghost, did not cry for like the first like, – I don't, I don't think she cried. I think they, they pulled her out and they immediately rushed her off. Wow. And so you know, my wife and I went down to the, um, the NICU. Uh, I think it was NICU. And – the lady was trying to explain to us like the oxygen, uh, how she was on oxygen, she's intubated, and mm -hmm. um, how she's not really breathing on her own or some Jeez. shit like that. She kind of she she did a bad job explaining it. That's not a good time to be a, do a bad job explaining something. But yeah, it really was. Yeah, it was like and it was like two thirty in the morning. And so okay, so okay, she'll be on this probably for a day or so, and then as she gets stronger, she'll be able to breathe on her own, right? And so it wasn't until like um, I think like around seven a.m., maybe even a little bit like um, uh, they called our room and they're like, "Your daughter is off the innovator. Hmm. You can come see her." So I come and I'm like, "Hey, Nola, you want me? You want me to push you down?" And Nola was out, you know, out of it. Uh, and she goes, "No, just go." So I went down there and man, I'll tell you. So I opened the door and the first baby right there was Grace. And she was crying, she her big eyes crying at me, and I fuck, I just put my arms like over her, and I just started bawling. And in that moment, Jeremy, in that moment, my heart was now no longer in my chest. It was it was taken from. Mm, yeah. And so uh, I was trying to explain it to her the other day. She goes, "You mean I broke your heart?" And I'm like, "No, <laughs> you stole my heart." How old is she now? Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Twelve. 12. And so I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was one of a very special moment. And then, uh, yeah, after that, it's all easy. No, I'm kidding. They're yeah. they're all. I think the one thing about parenting that I think uh, 
is always interesting is you never realize how different your kids are. Like they're just different. Like they're you're like you mean you both came from the same parents, <laughs> and you are just two totally different spiritual like things out there. Yeah. As so, um, we love it. We have a great time with it. I would say to everybody, uh, you have permission to be kind and patient to yourself as a parent yeah. because it's not an easy job. And if you don't have kids and you don't want kids, well, you have permission to be patient with yourself as well. Ed, phenomenal. Thank you so much. Anyone who has a chance to check out what Ed is doing, his stuff, his conference, his book. You didn't is, my fact, man. That was how can I top a story about you and your daughter, Grace? Uh, okay, cool. I mean, <laughs> All right. next time, next time we'll do a fun fact. If you I'm, want to share them, go ahead. I know you have to go. No, but, no, okay. No, make your okay. Next time. Oh, yeah. Walk, but but, uh, this was phenomenal. Ed, thank you so much. People should check out no foods. They should check out at O'Keefe show.com time collapsing. Um, you're a special person. I appreciate you. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach if you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand